Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hipnitz podcast episode 108. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this podcast from northern Tasmania in Australia. I am a Swedish expat and I have lived here for over 15 years now I think and I uh, live here with my Australian husband and our two daughters almost 10 and 6 years old. <laughs> Welcome so much to all of you. If you have been around for all 107 previous episodes, plus I think three Swedish episodes, or if you've been around just for this first few seconds of this um, um, podcast, this episode, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm so happy that there's people out there who... Um, appreciate and get some enjoyment out of these videos that I um, record and post on YouTube. Um, it is uh, really a treat for me to get um, to do this and to share these things with you that I talk about, which is mostly knitting. So this is a mostly knitting podcast and it is my um, my chance to get some time for me and to talk about the things that I really enjoy and love, which is, as I said, mostly knitting and anything related to wool and yarn and things like that. I am, as I usually do, I am um, recording from my studio, but if you've watched uh, my episodes before, you can see that I'm in a different um, place in my studio today. And I realised that it's not the best position for lighting and, and things like that. Yes, I have been rearranging and stuff and I just, I, I felt a little bit like I need to have a, like having my own studio, which is just like a small little granny flat almost, just like one metre from our front door. Um, I thought during these times when we're all sort of self-isolating and we're at home, basically all the time, it's actually luxury for me that I have my own place and I, I thought I should take advantage of that because um, I have this space and um, I mean it's my workspace but I could make it sort of a little bit of a cosy place to escape to and just to feel like I'm in a different place for a while. So I've sort of tidied up a bit and made it nice so I can um, maybe come out here and, and see it and just have some craft time away from the house, even though I'm not very far away from the house. And if I go out here, in reality, um, I will have a child coming and ask me a question every 10 minutes or so. But anyway, uh, I thought I'll, I'll set it up and at least that's a start. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, as I said, my name is Hannah. I'm in northern Tasmania. You can find me on Ravelry as Rosip Cheek, and I'm also Rosip Cheek on Instagram. Any of those places are a good um, place to get in contact with me. Uh, anything I talk about, sort of knitting related, and my projects, I have them all posted on Ravelry. So all the details you can find there. Um, if you can't, um, just you know, send me a message and I will be able to um, you know, answer any questions. What about more normally say? And the um, website is uh, rosehipisland.com and obviously I sell um, hand-dyed yarn and there's a lot up in the shop at the moment. Let's just move on. Let's get on with it. As you can see, I have a new knit that I'm wearing and I will insert photos so that you can properly see it. Um, the colour is not quite right here, but we just have to go with it. This is the Freewheeler by Kristen Finlay of Skein Yarn. This is a test knit that I have done and uh, I think the pattern might be published sort of towards end of April, not sure, it's mid-April now. Um, 
what can I say about it? Um, I use my own hand dyed yarn in my dandy sock base and in my silk mohair base. And this is a colorway that I called um, Calm Waters. And I actually dyed this up just for this pest knit. And I was aiming for a totally different color, but sort of halfway through my process, this was the color of the yarn. And I just decided to stop there and, and because I really loved this color. So I just stopped and um, made this the color. It is, I don't know, you I mean you won't really be able to tell maybe, but it's um, sort of an icy blue and a medium blue and a bit of purple in there as well. I really enjoyed knitting this because the construction is completely different to anything that I have done before. Um, I, ha I think I talked quite a bit about it in my last episode. Um, I think I did. <laughs> so I don't want to repeat too much. But I really enjoyed how it was constructed and I love the feel of it. It's, it's like wearing... Not a blanket, I don't know. Wearing a blanket is not always comfortable to walk around with, but it's just so soft. It's it's beautiful. And it's just really comfortable. Um it has the garter stitch up to the top until about here, and then because well not because, but you need the whole top part, the shoulders and the sleeves, you need back and forth and you use short rows to do shaping. And then you join it together and you knit stockinette for the body in the round. And there's an eye cord um, for the neckline and then just really for the sleeves and the bottom band. Um, it's, it's a lot of knitting in it because there's quite a bit of fabric. But I think... I mean, you don't really have to knit any sleeves. So I don't know that it, it, it is actually more knitting. It just feels like the body goes on for quite some time. But then once you've done the body, the sleeves are already there. So then you just have to do the finishing. So it's pretty cool. I did the second size, um, which I think, according to the pattern, like you're meant to have quite a bit of positive ease. But I didn't want too much positive ease because I thought it would still be quite big being this shape. So I did the, the second size, which was more similar to um, my actual bus size and not with positive ease. So that's the free wheeler. And yes, knitting my hand dyed yarn. And I think I'll be wearing this quite a bit during the winter. And I've, you know, I've woven in the ends and everything. And I still have three other jumpers that I still have to weave in ends on. That I, I think, I must have made them before summer. And I never got around to weaving in the ends because I wasn't going to wear them anytime soon. Now it's the time when I need to wear them. We're in autumn and it's getting colder. Nights are getting colder. We've had some beautiful sunny days, which have been really nice and quite warm. Um, but now, I don't think we're going to have much sun for the next week or so. So it's definitely going to um, get colder. So I'm super happy to have this jumper. Um, it's so funny. I have my notebook. <laughs> Look at my notes. This was last episode. I've only put 107. I never put any notes there. And for today, I just put 108. Great. Very helpful. So I don't, I don't have any notes for what I'm actually working on or anything. But yes, we're just relaxing a bit, aren't we? I, what did I do? I finished half a project. I finished one sock for the Free Socks 2020 knit along. Getting shade from my camera. 
Um, or shadow. This is my first sock of the April socks of Free Socks 2020. Um, again, I can't remember the name of it because it's in Finnish. And I know it starts with an R and has a lot of use in the name. And it might be designed or yes, a design by Tinaku. I'll put information on the screen for you and you'll be able to see. Uh, as you can see, this is pretty big. Um, it is the sock is a free pattern because it's part of this knit along, which is all about knitting free patterns. Um, the stitch count on this pattern is 72, I think. I normally do a 56 stitch count sock. Um, I know it's all over colour work, which sometimes can tighten your knit knitting, but it doesn't really for me. I'm a very loose knitter, even with colour work. Um, but I just, I just wanted to make it and not have to think about modifying and decreasing the stitch count and stuff. Um, so I started knitting it and then I tried it on and I could see that it would fit like a slipper sock on top of another sock. So I thought I'll just make them sort of like a slipper, like just a pair of socks to pull on top of another pair of socks when I'm at home and in the winter and cold feet. So I just kept knitting it. It's quite stretchy. So I didn't make the foot very long because I knew it would stretch out on my feet, foot. I just follow the pattern exactly. Uh, it's, I used some of my hand dyed yarn, some of um, a couple of skeins that's just been sitting in my special skein box. Skeins that I have dyed but have not really um, made the cut to be in my shop for different reasons. It might be that I have um, found a knot. It might be that I'm not 100% happy with the dyeing. It might have a bit of, of white on it that hasn't been dyed. You know, just something that's really not a big deal, but because... I, I know it. I don't feel happy with selling those skeins. So I've just, I have a box of all those and yes, they've just been accumulating and I've been feeling like I really need to use them. So that's what I did for these socks. And the green one is a dandy sock and the sort of grey pink one is a delicious sock. So that my two different sock bases that I use. And then the pink is just a, a mini I think it's actually from my advent candle advent calendar in 2018 from the warm kit. Um, yes, so I made those. I made the heel, pretty cool heel. They're so baggy, it's hard to show them. Maybe if I take them off the sock Um made the heel as the pattern. It's pretty cool. Um I, once I had completed this sort of triangle for the heel, I didn't keep going very much further because I knew they were so big. There was no point in making a, a tall leg on them. So I just finished um, whatever that pattern repeat and then I made the flowers. And in the pattern, there's a few beads on top of, of the flower. I just didn't do those rows. After that, I've seen other people making these socks that actually just knitted those dots. Instead of the beads, they just knitted pearl stitches in the same colour as the flower. And I sort of wish that I have done, had done that, but um, I'm, I'm happy with them the way they are. The colour work is not... I mean, you can see it now that I have the whole sock. It definitely looks better compared to what it looked like when I had just started. You can... Um, you can see the colour work and I I do really like the muted look of it. Um, I haven't washed these at all. They might even out a bit more. So I completed that. I was on a mission and then I um, 
I've decided, excuse me, decided that I better get the second one started as soon as possible because yeah, it's just getting going on it. It's a bit, it's a lot of work <laughs> in these socks, and I had a lot of other things that were really calling uh, to me to be cast on or you know need on. So I got started on the second one basically straight away and um, I've been knitting on these in the morning when I have quiet time and um, before everyone sort of gets going and start a day um, so this morning I did two pattern repeats actually so it's a uh, it's moving forward I, I think the second sock will definitely be easier and faster than the first one um, and I, I look forward to giving them a wash when they're both done and just see what they're like. And I must say that I'm actually proud of myself to to do this. Um, they're not going to be perfect, but you know they'll be they'll be good for what I'll use them for, and they'll be pretty to look at. And you know it's been a challenge, and I've learned. A um, few things from this pattern. I really liked the partridge toe. It was a fun heel. So um, I'm happy with those. They're happening. Another sock that I have been working on, which is a bit more of the Asia mindless knit. <laughs> um, and I had started this last time, I think. Yes, I had. Um, I'm also knitting on a pair of rag rug socks, a pattern by Vicky Vera. Um, I completed the first one yesterday. It's just very simple, but as you can see, the difference sitting on the soft blocker, this actually is a really good, really good fit. I just do them over 56 stitches. In this one I put in an afterthought heel and just a plain toe. Um, and they fit really well. I'm using some sort of budget sock yarn. Nothing special. Normally when I do rag rug socks, I use two different self-striping sock yarn. Um, this one is variegated and this is a self-striping. So that gives it a little bit of a different look. But you know, I'm using up sock yarn, they're going to be a good fit and I mean I think they're pretty funky, they're cool, really cool and the reason I um, decided to put the heel and toe in yesterday and just to finish them um, was because I wanted to be back to just doing the in the round knitting for um, times when I just need to have a small project on the go that I can just work on without really thinking or looking. So I have just started the second one. So that's those, the rag rag socks. Um, they're just good to have for, as I said, just a small project that you can, you know, pick up, you can work on it if you're cooking or homeschooling <laughs> or just um, an easy knit for when you're not really sure what to do next. So those are the two pairs of socks that I have been working on. And what else? I have everything a bit all over the place here. And another thing that I had um, started last time that I showed you was this cowl. This is the Comfy Cozy Trio Cowl. It's a pattern by Cozy Up Knits, which are four sisters and two of them design patterns and they also have a podcast. They're from Canada. And this pattern is in a collection of three patterns. It's a hat, fingerless mitts and this cowl. Um, I, I had purchased the pattern a while ago because I thought I... One of the sisters in the podcast who designed this, I guess, she 
She's been wearing it quite a bit on the podcast and I really, really like the look of it. Um, I thought it was just a tube, um, but it actually has decreases in it, as you can see, and that's probably why it sits so nicely on her. Um, so I got started on this also um, because I was going through my stash of my hand dyed yarn that were partial skeins or skeins that were not quite um, quite good enough to sell. Well, like I said before, they might have had a knot in them or not sort of looking like I had imagined they would look like. Um, so this, the main colour I'm using, I just dropped on the floor. I'm back. Um, this is the uh, the main colour I'm using, just a grey, and that was in this box of special skeins. I don't even know why, um, but I used that. And then I've been using um, contrasts um, of different projects that I have done with my own yarn. So this is from this is my red brick colourway that I use for socks. This is my white opal colourway that I use for socks. This is my coral cup, I think I called it, colorway in orange that I use for a pair of socks uh, for my daughter. And now, I was a bit not sure what color to use next. I had a green one, but I didn't feel like I wanted to introduce green because everything was sort of in the warm colors. I had this one, but I decided to not use that. Instead, I decided to use my, um, Christmas Day 2018 colorway. Um, so that's what I'm using. So it's similar to the white opal, but white opal is more of a pink cream color. This is more of a gray brown, and they have different color speckles in them. But I'm using that now. So I then I thought every second is sort of a, a speckle. And then for the last one, I will do a pink. And I was thinking about using that pink, but I think I use this pink instead. I think that will go well. So originally they were all my dandy sock yarn base, but now I've introduced um, other um, of my yarn bases as well, or fingering weight. So that's cool. Uh, this is also a very easy project now. I don't really have to look at it. It's been good for watching movies and Zoom meetings and stuff like that. And yes, first I felt like it was taking a really long time to get anywhere on it, but now I feel like I'm really, it's really going fast. And it's, I mean, just to get to change the colors and yeah, it's just, it's really fun. Really fun, neat. And yes, I hope it will be uh, a nice thing to wear and right, suit me and fit me and all those things. So that's happening. I don't know if I'll make the hat or the fingerless mitts, mitts that come in that com comfy cozy trio pattern. Um, I really only got it to make the the cow. But we'll see. Maybe if I have a lot of leftovers, which I probably will have, um, it might be something I can make. So I was knitting on my jumper. I have my two pairs of socks and I have the cowl. And I was out here in the studio looking through my stock, looking through my own personal stash and, you know, couldn't help but getting inspired. And we're, we just had four days off, school holidays started, we have had time off work and, you know, we've been not going anywhere. We've been going on daily walks and getting out a little bit, but, you know, there's still a lot of hours in the day spent at home. And everyone was so exhausted after doing our homeschooling for four weeks or three weeks, however long it was. We were, everyone was so exhausted and just needed time to do nothing and I mean I haven't really in even done 
baking and other like nice relaxing house things because I just had a lot of food at home and Easter eggs. It just we didn't need any more stuff. So we just had a lot of time to just relax. And yes, I really felt like I wanted to cast things on. So I had a look at my plans. I had I have a queue on Ravelry for things that I want to knit and patterns that I have and I've matched them up with my stash. Um so I had got some Bendigo Woolen Mill yarn out to make a Jennifer Steingas um, pattern that I had purchased a while ago and I had all that ready to go and then my eldest daughter came out here in the studio and I had my little pile of special skeins. My hand dyed that I was not going to sell. I had those out and um, you know, when, my, when my daughters come out here they just always have a look at everything and you know, touch and comment and oh I like that colour and that's nice and my daughter um, from this past said oh my mum these these two these two are my favourites um, and then she just sort of moved on but I thought oh okay well I have those two skeins and um, I think one has a knot in it one had a bit of um, a yellow stain on it so they were fine but they didn't match the batch they came from so I thought okay I am um, going to try to find something that I can ma make for her from those colours. And the colours were these two actually. These are the ones that I have in my shop. Um, the Magnolia colourway. And these are on Dandy. Dandy sock. And the Pisces colourway. And I have the Pisces in the Mohair silk as well. But these two were the ones that she saw and that she said they they are my favourite colours. So I thought, oh, I have so much other things I should be doing and, you know, can be doing. But I caked those two up. As you can see, there's nothing wrong with them. They just had a little minor thing. Um, so I didn't want to sell them. So I caked those up. And also in this process of going through stock, and stash and thinking about my projects and wanting to cast on new things um, excuse me. I also looked at what I currently have on the needles and I had those things that I said my my jumper my two pairs of socks and my cowl and then I have a blanket that I've had ongoing for a while I haven't really touched it it's on huge needles it's three strands of BK weight yarn that I knit together just to go out to stitch. I think it's a Stephen West pattern, squishy blanket or something. It's a free pattern that I started and I've come quite a bit. It's very heavy and I'm just not so inspired by it anymore. Uh, I do want to continue it though because I would really want to have a handy blanket. So maybe, you know, when I've been home for a few more weeks, maybe I'll feel inspired and, and keep going because I'm seeing all these other blankets, all these crochet blankets, and I'm so tempted. I'm, you don't understand. I'm so tempted. I could just, I feel like I could just sit and crochet squares for a whole day using all the minis and leftovers I have. And that will be the best life to live. But I know, or I have a feeling that if I start making one, crochet square maybe second and then third and then I want to move on to something else so I haven't let myself go down that rabbit hole and um, if I do give into it I will only do it if my daughter will help me <laughs> um, so I'm not sure if that's going to happen anyway I was looking at all my other projects and I have that big blanket. I will move on to that and get on with it at some point. And then I had one other long lasting um, work in progress. And that was a test crochet wrap that I did for Add a Day Designs a while back. And I did enough for the test, which was like one pattern repeat and one color change. And I used some of, um, I think it's my silver colorway. I had some underweight skeins, so I used that, and then mini skeins. Um, I think this, 
Oh, this might not, this might have been left over and then I had some mini skeins um, from an advent calendar that I was going to use for this. Um, and it was just sitting there and I really wanted to move on with it, but then I realised that it was holding me back from starting other projects that I really wanted to make because I didn't want to have too many things on the go. But I also realised that I wasn't sure that the finished item would be something that I would actually um, wear. It's a long wrap. And I'm just, I'm not, I can crochet, but especially at this time, it just takes too much of my brain to do all sort of lace work, crochet and follow specific instructions and when every row changes and stuff, it was just, it's just not happening. And I thought, if I just cut a yarn, leave it, put it away, and, you know, I don't have to um, – it doesn't mean that I can't go back to it. I can go back to it, but I still want to sort of erase it from my works in progress <laughs> so I don't feel stopped by it. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a bantam wrap. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. I just, if I was a more experienced crocheter and I could just do this without struggling too much, I would do it in a heartbeat. I'd, if, and if I didn't feel like it was something I would wear, I would give it away as a gift to someone. But even at Christmas, when my mum was here visiting, I gave her the whole project bag with this and all the minis I had planned to use for it in the yarn. And I said, would you like to finish this and keep it? And mum's like, mm, it's not really something that I would use. And then I thought, well, it was sitting then for another three months in the bag. And then I just, on the weekend, decided, no. Um, I felt too bad about giving up on it because it's a beautiful pattern. Um, but, you know, life's too short and um, I needed to free up space and my brain capacity for other things. And I can go back to it if I choose to do so. But this grey yarn that I had quite a bit of, um, I decided to use for something else. So I had these two skeins for my daughter, if we go back, get back to what I was talking about. Um, and I was looking for stride patterns, fingering weight for sort of 10 to 12 year old size which is a little bit of a tricky size for many patterns. They sort of go up to that size and then you have to go to like an extra small in an adult pattern. I don't want to make it too small. So she's sort of in between a child and an adult pattern size. I'm not sure. Um, I couldn't really find anything. And then I thought, do I really want to make a fingering weight jumper for her? Um, is it going to be worth my time? Will I ever finish it? And her birthday is coming up end of May. And how things are looking at the moment, you know, there might definitely won't be any big celebration. And who knows what, you know, we were able to source for presents and things like that. So I thought it was quite a nice thing if I can make her a jumper for her birthday and then it will be winter and it will be, you know, a really good time to have a new jumper. And then I thought, what about? If I do double strand it and make it a DK weight jumper. So I had a look at all these other patterns and spent a lot of time, and then in the end, I went, I'll just make a flax. I've made a flax for myself, I use it all the time. It's my 
a foam jumper it's my dying jumper because it doesn't look all that great anymore but it's easy to knit it's a pattern by tin can it's free pattern easy to knit fits well i'll just do that and i'll stripe it and um play with the colors and um that's what i've been doing and i am absolutely loving it so now um yes i'm tempted to just give up everything else and just enjoy this but i'm not going to do that still have some time before my birthday so i had two skeins of the gray one is a little bit darker i don't even know if they're the same colorway i can't remember anymore but they're the might be a silver colorway and the storm colorway or maybe they were just a bit off and the same colorway um so i did the ribbing with the two gray together and then i did i think 10 rows with the um, pisces and the gray together and then now i'm doing 10 rows of the magnolia and the silver gray held together so i'm going to do 10 rows of each and then just keep the cuffs all the ribbing I'm going to keep in the grey um, and I think I'll have plenty of yarn um, doing it this way and I think yeah I think it looks really cool I don't know if you can see it. the sun's coming in now I don't know what's going on with the weather yeah, so and it's so soft. It's just creating a really lovely fabric. So that's that one. And I am making the extra small size, the smallest adult size. Um and you know, obviously I'm I'm not hundred percent sure of my, my gauge, haven't really checked it. Um I can always modify it if you know I can always make more raglan increases if I need to. If it's, it looks a bit small. So that's that one. I'm super excited about that one. I think it's going to be quick, really quick knit. Um, and it's fun to be um, using some of my hand dyed that actually like current in my stock. Um, there's a lot of the stuff that I'm using, there are colorways that I don't dye anymore or haven't dyed for a long time or skeins that are not really the colorway at all they're just experiments or mistakes or other things so that's what i'm working and then of course my younger daughter she's getting a lot of hand-me-downs um so she's currently wearing i put this on instagram just yesterday that she's currently wearing a raindrops jumper that i'm a pattern by tin canets that i made for my eldest about five years ago she never wore it. I bought some not very soft yarn from Spotlight, some maybe Bella Baby Merino, some four ply um, inexpensive yarn that I dyed up in my raindrops colorway. It was the first time I dyed the raindrops colorway. That's why it's called raindrops in it. Yes, this colorway that I have dyed ever since. Um, but I made this jumper for her she never wore it she's really sensitive and it's just been sitting and then i got it out for my youngest and i thought it's still a bit big but I'll, I'll try it on her just to see and it fits it's the sleeves fit really well it's a bit long but that's just the way i've made it i think just like good to have with leggings it's almost like a little tunic so she's loving her hand-me-down knits and many of them have not been worn very much but she does have this jumper that i made for her was it last winter or the winter before i can't remember but it still fits her but the sleeves are a little bit short now so she's asked me to make the sleeves longer so that she can wear it for this winter as well this is the sock arms the worsted sock arms pattern and this is um hand dye self striping um, hand dyed that I dyed and the main colour is also hand dyed. She actually uh, drew a picture or painted a picture of what she wanted her jumper to look like and I dyed up the yarn and knitted it accordingly. 
So I have managed to find the leftovers I had when I made this jumper. And then I found, I'm not sure if this is enough to extend the sleeves very much. So I found some red, I think it's a Cascade 220 that I thought might go. So I'm just now going to try to figure out how I'm going to extend them. If I'm going to take the, rib, the yellow ribbing out and then do some red or something and then more yellow, or if I'm just going to just keep going. I'm not sure. Um, but I have to do it soon because she's going to be asking about this jumper soon. One of the reasons that I really felt like I wanted to do this um, video so soon after I did my last one, it's not only because I feel like I have a lot of new things to show you and I've been casting on new things and things like that. It's also because um, I think the Easter weekend and having the break and getting my stress levels down and stopping to wait for the current situation to end and just realizing that I should just go with the flow, adapt, just um, live here and now and um, do the best of the situation and um, yes, I not not stop living my life and um, not stop laughing and having fun and enjoying things. So that led to two things that I have been um, sort of not been putting in hold, but I haven't been inspired or felt like um, getting involved or I haven't yeah I've, I've just been uh, not into it <laughs> I don't know how to explain it anyway so the the first thing is that I am um, I thought I have a lot of stuff in my shop a lot of hand dyed yarn I had these events that I was going to attend, that I was going to vend at. And of course, like for everyone else, all other hand dyers, things have been cancelled and just changing plans completely. So I have all this stock, but I also have a lot of undyed yarn that I was going to dye up for these other events and things. And I thought, oh, I've been feeling like, oh no, I, I have so much of my hand dyed yarn. I just I don't need to do any dyeing. But I want I want to do the dyeing because that's another creative outlet for me. It's like knitting. I just really enjoy it. I enjoy playing with colours and it's fun. So with this feeling of no, life's not stopping, we're continuing, we're just adapting and changing, we're doing what we can. But I can't stop doing things that I really love and enjoy. So um, I decided that I was going to have a think about advent calendars because I had all my minis. I was lucky enough to have purchased a lot of um, undyed yarn before the world sort of not stopped, but everything is a bit harder and shipping and freight and things are a bit slower. Um, but I had a lot of undyed yarn and I thought, I really want to do start doing the advent calendars so I spent quite a few days thinking about it and then we were out on a bicycle ride we would take the children to a nearby deserted car park um because our youngest she's she knows how to ride a bike and everything but she's not very confident being out in traffic so we take them up to this car park and we go around in circles hopefully eventually we'll be able to adventure you know, further away. We take our 10-year-old um, to a bike track and stuff and, and she's fine, but with the youngest one, <laughs> we're going around in circles on the car park. So I was doing that and I just had this idea what I wanted to do with the um, advent calendar, which was just really lovely. And um, I came home and I got my 
colored pencils out, I got the color wheel out and I just started planning. And yes, I now have my plan. And um, because I have, it's quite early in the year still, I don't know if maybe I'll do a few uh, advent calendars in this theme that I have thought of. And then maybe I'll do some other ones a bit later or after that. Um, I see, but it's, I'm really excited about it, and I actually just got started um, yesterday. Uh, and I've, I've I've done it in a way more specific, scientific way than I, than I I normally do with my dyeing. Um, so that's fun, just doing things a little bit differently. And um, yeah, so that's one fun thing that I've decided that life continues and this is one thing that I would like to do and I can do it so why not the other thing that I haven't really been involved with uh, for a while but it's really really something that I um, enjoy is the knit along that we have ongoing so last year we had this huge knit along uh, for Australian and New Zealand indie dyers um, and we had some amazing prizes donated from dyers and just private um, persons, viewers, <laughs> and, and a lot of great participation. We had like so many amazing projects made out of yarn dyed by Australian and New Zealand indie dyers. And it was really a highlight of 2019. And this year, we decided we were just going to keep going. And I did say from the start that we'll, you know, have this thread with finished objects, keep posting when you finish things, but it will be a bit less formal than last year. Um, don't know about prices and things like that. It's just, we just want to share what we're making and promote Indie Dice. Um, but I thought I really want to, and people have continued posting finished objects and I've been loving seeing them, but I haven't really been um, you know, commenting and being very active in the thread on Ravelry, even though I always go and check when there's something new. Um, but I thought I want to blow a bit of life back into that knit along because I think, especially at times like this, we really need to support our small businesses and indie dyers and we need to um you know share the love for things that we enjoy and you know share pattern designs share indie dyers and just share our craft um so i i, I want to and i plan to get more active in that rivalry group and i thought um one way that i can maybe do that and help with making people um more active or feel more motivated to actually post things because i'm sure all of you out there who can um are making things out of indie dyed yarn from australia and new zealand um so why not you know share it with everyone in this uh, ravelry thread in the rose hip knits podcast ravelry group so what i'm going to do is um because i had a lot of amazing prizes um donated to the podcast um and i have some things that i wanted to give away as well i have put together this big um price package that i'm going to give to one randomly selected um person who who posts a finished object in the ravelry thread or maybe i'll just I don't yes we'll, we'll do it like that that's the easiest way just it's for finished objects but really I I also want to pe see people posting um things that they're working on because I don't want people to feel stressed about actually finishing things or even if you have a skein of yarn from an indie dyer in Australia or New Zealand that you just think is really pretty and you want to share it 
share a photo of that in the this general um, thread for the um, for the knit along. Um, but then we'll have a separate we have a separate thread for finished objects for the knit along. And I think I'll give it quite a bit of time. So mid year, I think. End of June, I will draw a random winner from the FO thread. And um, it's going to be a few things. In, I'm just doing the one big price to make things easy for myself. Um, so I have a project bag that I have made, just a drawstring project bag. It's lined. Uh, it doesn't have um, any interfacing. It's just a soft um, bag. So there's that one and two skeins of my dandy sock yarn in blues, two different blues. So they're all, it's a blue theme here. And I have this amazing pattern book that was donated by one of the podcast viewers, one of my podcast viewers. <laughs> um, so that will go there as well with the price. And I also, from the same person, got some really cool stitch markers. There's a few of them on there. Pretty fun, cool ones. So these things, two skeins of yarn, pattern book, a project bag, and stitch markers. All those things um, will go in a price for mid-year for the, I can't even remember what we call this knit long. What's the New Zealand Indie Dyer 2020? No. I will put the hashtag here and go and check out the Rose Hip Knits podcast Ravelry group and there's um, threads for the for the niche along there. Um, so please join in. Let's just um, have a bit of fun in amongst all the craziness that's going on. I just really, really felt like we need to continue on doing those things. They're really important and people really enjoy it. and. Um, it's good interacting with each other through this time and just showing pretty things. I think it's, I think it's really important. So hopefully you feel like this is something that you want to um, you know, get involved with and uh, take part and just something a little bit of fun. And we had such a great time last year and I know this year is different and we've, we've done it once. So it's not it doesn't have the same um, you know, new shiny temptation maybe, but I think it's a great knit along, and I I, I hope um, you go and have a look at those threads in the Ravelry group. I think um, having the Easter break has been really really good, um, just to sort of get stress levels down. It's been good for the kids to just not have to think about school. Because it's been um, a huge challenge for them. For my elders, it's been a really big challenge to do everything online. Um, and not. She has interactions with her friends over you know, phone calls and video calls, but she's, she can't see them. Um, she can't be in the same room with, as them. And I think you know, she misses that and she's found it really challenges to do her schoolwork in a completely different way and just the change sort of happened overnight so yes and everyone was adjusting all the students were adjusting the teachers were adjusting figuring things out figuring out the workload they could give them and yes yeah, so it took a while to get balanced and then you know the break came and that was just really lovely and I think for term two we'll we know what to expect more and I think the school and the teachers have more of an idea of, of how to do it in the best way. But then for my youngest, who's six, um, it's been more challenging because of that she's missing out of that whole environment of 
friends and playing with friends. She's she's not struggling with schoolwork, but a lot of the schoolwork that they give them is just sort of crafty activities and um she's a little bit above their literacy and numeracy that they're doing, so she's not really interested and we don't really feel the need of her doing all those activities when she's sort of ahead of that. So we've been doing a lot of other things with her. Um so schoolwork has not been a problem, but her like over the last four weeks, her her mood and her behaviour has just really changed. And I think it is just because we're stuck at home, basically, and she really loves exploring and finding things out and talking to people and interact and she's not getting any of that and there's only so much we can do it's only so much playing you can do and um yes yeah, so i didn't realize but then she had a video chat with a friend um from school and they talked for one hour on video call and after that she was it's completely changed she was like back to her normal and then i realized that um yes she'd really been missing all that social interaction and so i have to try to figure out um we're going to keep doing the video calls with her friend which was probably that would be really good but i also have to figure out um yes what to do with her during the the weeks to keep her in a, in a good mood and sort of not just going all sad and grumpy and yeah it's a challenge it's it's just so hard for all of us and you never know I mean no one's ever experienced this before so no one knows how their children are going to react and um yeah it's just it's really really hard but um I think we have all the resources for doing the best we can and um, you know, we're all together and we're all showing each other love and we're um, you know we're there for each other and it's not like someone is just left to deal with stuff themselves so uh, yeah we're doing the best we can adapting and making sure everyone's um, doing well because it's not only about actually getting sick, getting the flu, or, you know, um, it's also about, you know, mental health and, yeah, with all these restrictions, they're really, they are going to, you know, cause um, problems for how people are, are feeling. Yes. But the break over Easter has been wonderful. It was really needed and it's been, yeah, that's been great. And, you know, I, I can now gather a bit of um, <laughs> energy and motivation for continuing on with homeschooling when we finish our Easter break or our school holiday break. We have two weeks off now, so another week and a half. All right. Well, that was um, all that I had for today sun's out now and we're going to go out for a bit of a walk and a picnic I think so that will be nice um yes and I I have a um I have some yarn that I need to go and rinse now and I have a new yarn base that I um have test dyed on so I'm excited to go out and, and rinse that yarn and see what that's like so yes um I'll do that but for now I just want to say thank you for hanging out with me here in my studio and um listening to me rambling on about everything and nothing I hope you have enjoyed the time please you know comment anything you'd like me to know any feedback message me um just yeah 
interact and um, stay in touch. And that's all. That's all for this time. Everyone out there, stay safe, stay calm, and enjoy what you have around you. And um, all the best to all of you, and I hope to see you soon again. So bye, everyone, and take care.